How do you do, fellow kids? Kura the artist here. We're here, folks. The infamous Ultimate Kevin arc. The story filled with elaboration on Kevin's backstory where half of it gets retconned, epic fight scenes that tend to resolve too quickly, and of course, the huge debate about whether or not Ben's gone completely bonkers when he decides that he wants to kill his best friend. And while all these things are true, personally, I still like the Ultimate Kevin arc. The UAF crew really wanted to do a Kevin's mutation storyline ever since the third season of Alien Force, but they had to compromise due to the change in direction of the show. We sorta got it, as he was still technically mutated and still had to deal with the percussions in the third season, but it's clearly not what they set out to do. This arc seems to make up for that, and while it might have been too late in the game to really pull the strings that they had planned, I still think most of the end result is pretty enjoyable. One of the biggest highlights is a look into Kevin's time in the Null Void, with half of the episode taking place during the five-year time skip, showing us how Kevin changed back from his mutated state, him learning his new powers, and the childhood trauma that further shaped his newfound morals in the present day. We got another big one coming through, so if this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all my previous breakdowns. But by all means, watch this one first, I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. But first, just letting y'all know I've started my Vilgax Attacks playthrough over on Twitch. This will be my third playthrough, so make sure to check me out every Tuesday at 2 p.m. EST over on Twitch to have a chat and watch me do it live. And check out our second channel down below for my first two playthroughs of Protector of Earth and Alien Force the Game. Now, on to the breakdown down. Len seems to be an expert with writing Kevin with both Trade-Off and Vendetta. Now coming back once more for Nora Iron Bars a Cage, which first premiered November 19th, 2010. Kevin, still mutated and mentally unstable after the events of Forge of Creation, has returned to the Null Void to get revenge on Morg, a guard turned prison warden turned intergalactic drug smuggler who murdered his friend years ago. Said friend, Coral, was the one who originally helped Kevin control his anger. And now, Ben and Gwen must follow Kevin into the Incarsicon prison and stop Kevin from taking things too far. And we're back here at the Null Void. Would you believe this is the only time we see the Null Void in Ultimate Alien? Seriously, look it up. It's just this episode. It feels like we're always here though, doesn't it? Probably just very popular, so it feels that way. You know, it's in practically like every video game. It's in the Heroes United special. It's mentioned very frequently. But yeah, as for actual appearances, this is it. They just got this rectangle here. So this is their equivalent of the whole. This seems crazy, but we really do be doing this to people right here on Earth. At least this guy is like above ground and has a little window. Look at him come out, man. He was cramped. Time to get back to work. Yo, hold up. These look just like the kind of guns that the D and aliens use, but blue. Is this what they had in the Vendetta too? Yo, it is. I guess I didn't pick up on that last time. There's the same collection of background aliens that we always get. I break them down a few times, like in my Secrets of the Omnitrix breakdown. And I think it was Connor Rath too. So go check out those breakdowns if you want me to pick apart who each little guy is here and where he's from. Welcome back, truck. Been quiet around here without you. Quince right here, voiced by Fred Tatashore. The original voice for Rip Jaws, Cannon Bolted, Way Big. Nice to see him back in Ben 10. So, I hear there's been some changes while I was in solitary. And Truck right here is Xander Berkeley. Not a common name you see in the show. This is our first time hearing him in Ben 10. New guy, I'm gonna need to hurt him some, just so he knows who's in charge around here. It's funny, it reminds me of the opposite of that scene from Parks and Rec. Just a little tooth pain. Just a second. <laughs> Pulled the tooth out yesterday. But it's always a good idea to demonstrate to your co-workers that you are capable of withstanding a tremendous amount of pain. That's the guy. Man has all these powers and chooses to just punch the rocks. If anything, man, you got Armadrillo in there. Like this little blue flash that comes out when he smacks the rocks, though. Probably has to do with these crystal structures. And here's Ultimate Kevin. He's got the collar on over the hood. That can't be comfortable. Kevin's been missing for over a week. So it's been a week since Forge of Creation. And yeah, him being gone that long is worrisome. They've been pretty tight since episode one of the last series, so it's interesting to explore a longer change in the dynamic of the trio here. Not missing. He left us. His choice. Ben is not taking it so well. You know, they've been doing a lot of emotional bonding through Ultimate Alien so far, so I get why he's hurt. It's not his fault the power affected his mind. But fair or not, he has to pay the price. See, I can get where he's coming from, but it's way more complicated than that. It's like if you accidentally kill someone, do you let that person go because it was an accident, or is the fact that you still did the crime valid enough to be treated punishable for it? Of course, we know what's legally the right answer, but even then, there's a lot of deeper depths of gray area in there. These cats, man. 
I'm at lunch. And this monster shows up and says that it's Kevin Levin. Claims I owe him eight bucks that I borrowed from him five years ago. All right, but this is Ultimate Alien, not Alien Force. Five years ago, Kevin was 12 and should have been in the null void. He could just be summoning it up or wrong or whatever, but there's no way that Kevin had time to do this five years ago. You can see what happened next. But see, this, this is too far. What Kevin did in the forge, you can argue it might have been the only way. Paradox would probably even vouch for that. But this, this is just being unnecessarily petty. But that also brings up the topic of people, if you want to look at it this way, should people really be held responsible for their inability to function coherently based on whatever mental issues they got going on? Because that's really what Kevin's going through right now. So it's like, can you really keep using your mental disability as a valid excuse to pretty much do anything, but then just be like, oh, well, you know what? Couldn't control it. Sorry. I feel like there's no right answer. Like there's no one definitive standard that you can say yes or no to and then build off of there. It's just, it's way too complicated. And I think that combined with the portrayal is what's really pushing Ben over the edge here and leading him down the path of wanting to kill Kevin. We're really sorry about this, Barry. Ben's got a white sleeve right here. What's wrong with him? He's been settling old scores. I think he means why is he a giant fucking monster, Ben? But you know, I guess this is just normal as part of the universe now. You know, Ben's secret is out. Might as well just start looking past that, right? Big ones, small ones, it's all the same to him. And now Kevin's losing the ability to differentiate the severity of the situations that he hasn't been able to move on to. Fucking a guy up over for a couple bucks? Yeah, that's stupid. Obviously, that's horrible. But when one or two major things kick off this very brash, erratic mindset, that every little thing that adds on to it starts amplifying and feeding into it more. And as ridiculous as Kevin fucking this guy up for a few dollars may seem, I'm glad they're including it to show you that not everything Kevin is doing is just, and we can't just be like, well, Osmosians make people insane, so this is fine, right? Look at the way these tracks are shaped. It's much a small change from Earth standards, but it's just enough to be like, ooh, look at that, that's alien. Nice little lantern designs too. I like how these scars bulge off of his skin. They're not just marks, they're like actually healed flesh wounds. He ain't bothering nobody, he's bothering me. Kevin's literally across the room not acknowledging him at all, and he's like, I fucking hate this guy. Fresh meat, I'm top dog here. Good for you, go bury a bone or something. <laughs> Even when emotionally unstable, Kevin's still cracking jokes. <laughs> So if Kevin here is smacking the rocks multiple times and barely getting any debris, well one hit sends this guy flying. How tough are these rocks? Well we know why Kevin's really here, so he's probably just buying time and not actually trying to like mine the minerals. You're coming with us. You're making a mistake. I saw the whole thing. Warden won't be too happy to lose a good worker like Truck. This guy is good. Knows his way around the system. All of you, back to work. And these robots can even be persuaded. When an AI is so advanced that it starts acting human, technically, it starts acting stupider. You're welcome. Don't remember asking for help. Oh, his spider monkey arm is super tiny in this shot. You look like you could use a friend. Looks can be deceiving. Yeah, Kevin definitely seems pushed over the rails, but he doesn't seem to be acting like uncontrollable right now. He's keeping his cool, keeping his shit together, and staying focused on his goal. Emotionally, he's acting pretty rational. In fact, the only reason he's here is for revenge on his friend who died, so. But again, that's also why I feel like scenes like this are important as well, to remind you that these choices he's making aren't completely from an infallible perspective. There's something about that guy. Whose house is this? Is this Julie's house? No, they're in here. Is this is this supposed to be Kevin's mom's house? Yo, it is. It's even the same shot we saw last time too, except all the damage has been repaired. But here they're going through his room as if he has a place to stay here. Man, I get that Kevin's a prideful dude, but if you have a whole room to yourself, just live here. Why are you out in a garage all the time? I was hoping maybe Kevin had left something behind to tell us where he was going next, but... Oh, well, it looks like he did. So that means he's still visiting home pretty often, too, which is good, you know? Trying to keep a solid relationship with his mom. Although, you know Harvey Hackett, his stepdad that randomly shows up in a few episodes? Maybe instead of having Kevin just carve them a clue in a desk, this could have been a good scene to introduce him. And he could say that Kevin was here earlier and said something about the Null Void prison or something. I don't know. It's less that I have a problem with them finding this symbol. I just have an issue with how random Harvey is of a character, especially if he's supposed to be in a pivotal scene for the conclusion of this art. Like, they're already in Kevin's house right now. This would have been a great scene to introduce Harvey as a character so that we can have a more concrete payoff in Absolute Power Part 2. Don't recognize it? Well, I do. Because you know Ben's got that good memory for symbols. But yeah, we've also never seen the symbol before as an audience either, so we can't even make this connection. So like to us, this means fucking nothing. And just having Harvey show up and have a conversation with them would have been a better focus too. Could have been a good lead into the next scene. They're all eating out of big mugs. Can you just eat a rock? Yes, yes he did. That must be Upchuck's DNA. I know you. You were 
here before. Kevin Levin. No, I'm not. Jeez. Kevin really is massive. I was your friend, remember? I came back here on purpose. After everything you went through to get out. See, this was awesome the first time around because we were never actually told how Kevin escaped the Null Void in Alien Force. And then so much just happened, we all just kind of forgot about it and stopped caring. But yeah, the story of Kevin leaving the Null Void and getting cured of his DNA mutation was never told. So here we're finally getting some answers and, you know, just the wait for that resolution adds to the hype. We're not expecting a delivery of new prisoners. More gray here is also voiced by Xander. He's got an all right design. Still kind of basic, but we haven't really seen this combination of features before. I like the red pupils on the black eyeballs. Oh, this background is CG rendered. Looks really good. Arm blasters. Be ready for anything. Is that what these things are called? Arm blasters? Maybe they should have blasters on their arms then. <laughs> This is some cool looking energy. The way it's shaped and with the little particles coming off of it really reminds me of like classic series effects. That's old school Ben 10 right there. We're no happier about this than you are, Warden Morgue. All right, so they just know each other. Guess they know a lot of people by now. I like that he has two noses. Incarsicon is off limits to the plumbers. And now we get confirmation that this is Incarsicon. Definitely a different one from Secret of the Omnitrix, but you know, same system, I guess. I don't think we got confirmation this was Incarsicon and Vendetta. I don't remember if like we're learning this now or if it's said back then. Man, I'm slipping. We're here to warn you. I am perfectly safe. Guess we'll just have to wait here for the next supply transport ship. Those crafty kids. Just watch your back, okay? We were serious about the danger. I love that Ben walks up to him and speaks to him with a semblance of authority. This is like an authoritative cocky Ben, not an egotistical cocky Ben. You don't look much like you did the last time. Hey, he shapeshifted his arm. Yes, we see classic Kevin's mutation again. That's crazy. Pretty sure this is the only mutation we see in multiple art styles. It would have been really cool to see this in Omni versus art style too, but I get why there would be no spot to place it realistically. Although there is not a lot of polish on this. Come on, if you've got the guts. Similar to Young Heat Blast and Forge of Creation, they don't do the solid black shading for the Pyronite features, even though that's standard for UAF. Plus he has blue shorts instead of brown. I don't get why they have to change the color of that though. Feisty little thing, ain't he? I know the feeling. Ah, oh, and here's Quarrel, voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson. I freaking love this guy. It's time to cool off. Make me. Yeah, this shot draws him a little bit better. The dull, bright colors to indicate this is a flashback does mess with the design, though. <laughs> Oof. So not only was Quarrel able to flip him over, he's also able to touch the Pyronite Plasma easily without getting burned. Look at him go. One hit. When you finally decide to let go of that anger, you know where to find me. What's with the mining gear? I am not programmed to provide that information. I wonder if he could use Brainstorm to hack into him and make him talk. Or even upgrade, since allegedly Ben has all of his aliens in Ultimate Alien. Or at least that's what they advertised. These will be your quarters. It's just another cell. As I recollect. I need help. It's such a trip seeing Classic Kevin admit that he needs help with himself. Because if Classic caught us anything, it's never trust Kevin, no matter how much he seems like he's on your side. He will always double cross you. Did it to Ben multiple times, tried to do it to Vilgax. It must have taken a lot to push everything aside and admit that he can't do everything on his own. I don't know if it's more effective that we had to wait to get this type of development for him, or if we jump started with him going through all of this in Alien Force, like the show actually did, and now we're getting all of this later on once we like Kevin. How do you guys feel about that. Is it better that we waited for Kevin's origin story or should we have gotten all of this before he joined their side? Let me know what you think in the comments. Quarrel taught you to control your anger, but there was a guard who hated Quarrel. So I thought when Morg got in charge, he replaced all of the guards with robots, right? That's what they're about to say. But here's a robot guard right here. I guess they had both the whole time and instead of replacing the guards with robots, he just got more robots and fired all the guards. Makes you wonder what Quarrel went through in order to learn to control his anger, or why he's here in the Null Void to begin with. But yeah, we're getting a good morph animation. We like never get this in UAS. Seeing all the DNA get sucked back into him. It's also cool to see it break off. So it looks like the Pyronite and Petro Sapien materials are shattering off completely. And now he doesn't have those arms at all. And I guess the Wild Mutt arms were his like, real arms. Makes you wonder where everything lines up in Kevin's brain. Like that scene we saw in Classic where when Ben transformed back from Stinkfly, his tail was caught underneath the pipe, but when he turned back to human, Ben was pulling on his leg. Accelerate's tail just gets swiped off screen. That's easy to animate. And there he is, Kevin's human again. Weird seeing the Pyronite magma act all chunked up too. Not sure how I feel about that. Looks like we got some Mechamorph chunks too, but uh, I don't like that all of his clothes are intact. I get why they have to do it. But I just like, I'm never a fan of like when you see clothes get ripped off and everything and a character turns into a monster and then when they turn back, their outfit is perfectly intact. And again, why couldn't they just give him the brown shorts? That would have been fine. And while you got better, 
Morg's hatred grew worse. People really out here hating on you just for self-improvement. That's just how it is sometimes. Yeah. Quirrell changed my life, all right. Oh, and classic Kevin absorbing materials. That was really awesome to see, too. So now we've seen teen Kevin mutate and classic Kevin absorb material. Like that they're giving him little texturing on him to indicate that he's made of concrete. But it's weird seeing, like, his necklace completely covered, too. That's so awesome. Good for you, Kevin. You don't belong here anymore. Ain't like I've got a choice. Okay, here's all the different guards and stuff. Maybe that one robot being drawn there was a mistake. I've been working on a way out of this pit. I really like how they draw young Kevin in UAF too. Young Ben and Gwen, they they butchered that. I'm not gonna lie. But young Kevin, they got pretty well. We can go together. Whenever you say. I could hear a little bit of Beast Boy in there. I also think Greg Sipes does a good job playing young Kevin too. I mean, it's not that much of a change, but it's like, it doesn't sound weird or anything, you know? It's like Yuri Lowenthal playing young Ben would sound super weird. But Greg Sipes playing young Kevin sounds fine. Plan into action. This is just the same shot from earlier played in reverse. Somehow, we started a major riot. Somehow. No, for real, how did he? Tunnel in secret for years. Years. Jesus. All that effort. And now we're seeing all the mines from present day. But no lights, no track. Before Morg started his drug trafficking here. Going somewhere, boys? I found your tunnel months ago. Oh man, so Morg knew. It was a setup of a setup. Too bad you both got vaporized. Ah, run! I was a coward. I ran. Oh man. That really does get me every time. Kevin was 11 years old, couldn't deal with his powers that would cause him to become mentally unstable, genetically mutated, trapped in a prison in an alternate dimension, finds one guy that's really willing to sit down and work with him. He actually starts improving just to see that guy murdered saving his life. The fact that Kevin could come back from all of that in the first place was commendable. So in Kevin's perspective, every time things start looking up for him, they go wrong. Coral teaches him to control his powers, but then he gets killed. He befriends Otto and they try to escape the Null Void together, Otto betrays him. Gets accepted by the Tennysons and becomes part of their trio, gets mutated twice, and then starts having to deal with his mental issues again. I'm not defending Kevin, but things are adding up to why he is like this. I just feel like what really sullies it is the random switch at the end of Forge of Creation because of how fast and tacked on it feels. Like they foreshadowed energy makes Osmosians insane, they're establishing Kevin's backstory, they're doing everything right, it's just the initial presentation in Forge of Creation, that really should have been a two-parter. I feel like if they just played out that transition a little bit slower and really made it feel more natural, it wouldn't have polluted the general opinion of the Ultimate Kevin arc. Well, that and the ending. The sound of Morg's blaster will haunt me the rest of my life. I feel like we all got some shit like that in our lives. Morg's the warden now. He got rid of the old guards, replaced them all with robots. Yep, see? So they did go from guards to robots. So yeah, that one robot showing up in the flashback, that, that must have just been an error. Then he started using all the prisoners to mine this glowing blue crud down here. Well, look at the shape of that face. <laughs> Come on, Gwen could definitely get out of here. You ever seen the Ultimatrix drawn like this before? That is quite the shape. <laughs> And this is another example of Goop's UFO just not making any sense appearing on the other side of this door here. I think I've said this before, but they screw up how this thing works more often than not, so. The anti-gravity projector was a neat idea, but they can never seem to stick to it logically, so maybe they shouldn't have done it to begin with. It's like every time you watch Goop now, you're like distracted by the fact, does, does this make sense? Is this work? Rather than just being able to sit back and enjoy the scene. Also, he could have just done this inside, too. He didn't need to leave the cell in order to acidigate the doorknob. So they could have just avoided that error altogether. What are they digging for? Morg doesn't want anyone on the outside to know about it. Which is why he replaced all the guards. Well, the robot's all gonna be connected to a main server, right? Or at least that's what you would assume with how these things usually work. Because it's not just keeping the prisoners in check. There's shipment and other incarcicons to make sure he doesn't get caught. He's gotta be running a lot of shit here in order to cover his tracks. I'm sorry to hear you say that. And also, he seems to just be wherever, doing whatever he wants. It's like he's never actually doing his job. Try not to make too big a mess. Don't leave. Leaving before they die never goes well. And also, he should know better. These robots ain't shit compared to Ben and Gwen. Oh, I like how this looks. You can see the thickness in the shield instead of it just being a flat rectangle. Boom, she just took out like what? How many were there? Six guards in one go. Oh, but they're back. Stay alive for. Aw, oh, shit. He's getting some of that dank intake, some of that devil's lettuce, some of that feel good, some of that sparkle charcoal. <gasps> 
sexy. This is something I'm surprised they didn't digitally edit. They're really drawing them warp around like an old Disney cartoon. It does look really good though. Stuff like this is like not an easy thing to animate. <laughs> But this isn't just warping your vision, this is causing him to full on hallucinate. Ah, uh, look at that transition. How the eyes spiral around the mouth and then turn into a havoc beast with flaming hands. What a very specific and weird thing to see. No! And also the way Ben's reacting too. So he's visually and mentally tripping right now. Ben! Oh, I like the way her shield is tracked onto her hands like this. It's me! That sounds like the sounds that Dee does for Wild Mutt. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely D. Bradley Baker, all right. Right here, Ben. Ben? Even if you can't see her, can he hear her? They gotta be screwing with, like, all of your senses in order to trick you visually, audibly, and mentally. <laughs> <laughs> she literally just fucking slapped Humongousaur and it worked. Strong enough to slap Humongousaur, but not strong enough to rip open a door. Also, he's much bigger in this shot than he should be right now. This is, like, halfway to full size. You're not thinking straight. Gwen? Thought you were a monster. Yeah, that's some strong shit. Who's uh who's more got on plug right now? He's forcing the prisoners to mine some sort of alien dream dust. Intergalactic drug trafficker. But you waste morgue and you undo everything Quarrel did for you. I can't just let his murderer walk away free. Yeah, all of this does seem very just. The osmosian insanity is what's giving Kevin the motivation to go through with these feelings. But I, I can't say he's in the wrong right now. At least with this specific scenario. Now I'm gonna shove as much of this as I can down your throat before clubbing you to a pulp with your own. Arms. Jesus, that's a pretty brutal way to handle it though. If he did that, I don't know what would kill him first, Kevin's strength or just ODing? Think again. Ah! Damn, yeah, it's crazy that those collars can even affect Ultimate Kevin. It's gotta be some very high grade tech right there. And it hurts all of them at once too. These guys didn't even do anything. Those collars are killing them, some sort of sonic feedback. And they're still going too, like, Morg's about to kill all these prisoners right now. Also, it's interesting that Ben's able to identify this as a sonic problem. Like, I, I wouldn't have gotten that from this. That's a, that's a new sound effect. Well, all right. And Echo Echo still doesn't get his own transformation. Normally I can excuse the repeated animation, but in this shot, it does look very cheap. This doesn't look that great. In fact, this texture swirling behind him right here, I'm pretty sure is the same animation they use for the null void portals, but tinted green. Echo and the effects start happening before he even starts the attack. Look right here. Just a bit early on those sonic waves there. Now they're all just shooting one basic ring forward. Yeah, this Echo Echo sequence does not look great at all. <laughs> so this pickaxe right here can penetrate and destroy a robot, but Gwen's mana can't? Uh-oh. Uh-oh is a very human response from these robots. Game over, more. You lose. Kevin just rips his off. Ben didn't shatter his. In fact, why did his stop? I don't know, like, Echo Echo's attack shouldn't connect to this scene the way that it does. That doesn't make any sense. Kevin! Forget it, Gwen. Armadrillo! I feel like the background should have been moving with him too on this shot. Let me go, Tennyson! Alright, so Kevin has 100% the same powers as Armadrillo. Because Greg absorbed 100% of Andreas, which then got transferred into Kevin. So on that premise alone, these two should have equal strength. Then add on 100% of the other Andromeda 5, plus one tenth power of everything else Ben has got. And Armadrillo's holding all of that back with one hand. Also, Ultimate Kevin's apoplexian claw is transparent right now. Can't let you hurt him, Kevin! Ben, watch out! Make a shield for him! Ah oh, man, Kevin, you're fucking up. Like, if you really wanted to kill him, don't set up a scenario where he could die. Do it right then and there. Maybe part of him deep down doesn't want to do it. Either that or he's just foolish. You no, know, this is also the same guy that doesn't realize he can phase, even though he's very obviously part Big Chill. Do your, your jelly thing. Oh, Turbo? Really? Turbo! Every single time she does turbo, it's so different from how it worked last time. Like, what is this? This isn't turbo. I don't know what this is. A wind tunnel that's supposed to diffuse the speed of this elevator? Cut it real close since he's practically already at the ground. Even if it stopped right there, he'd smack. Nice of you to drop in. <laughs> Any son of Kevin? Long gone. 
people never make sure. And you didn't leave too? I still got time to serve. I like this guy too. You never find out his story, but he's been here for a bit. And even though he seems to be reformed, whatever he did to get here, he feels like he's still got to suffer for it. I don't know if he'd be better to know his story or not though. You know, some things are better left in ambiguity, but it does make you super curious. You see what Kevin's capable of now. That's why we have to help him. I think we're past that. We have to put him down. So there is a transition there. You know, Kevin flipping the switch once he absorbs energy, sure, that was pretty immediate and random. But it's not like Ben also immediately went to, let's kill him. You know, he wanted Kevin to pay for what he's done. That makes sense. He's been doing a lot of uncool shit lately. And he was trying to talk it out with him and give him a chance too, and stop him. So even after all of this, he still did try to reason with him and it didn't work. And you can tell Ben's not 100% comfortable with the idea yet, even though he's come to that conclusion now. I think we're past that. I think. We have to put him down. See, that's not coming from a rational rage. It just feels like he's finally willing to accept that this might be the solution they have to take. Some things in this arc are rushed, but not everything. I feel like we give this arc way too much flack. I said a lot of my major points in the breakdown already. I'm gonna give this one a plot of a four. We finally get some elaboration into how Kevin escaped the null void and cured himself of the DNA. And even with all the Cervantes stuff in Omniverse, all of this still seems like it could have happened. Like this definitely seems truthful and not a false memory. So therefore it does add to Kevin's character. And I think it was handled very well. I like the drug trafficking plot line too. It does tie into the main story about Kevin wanting revenge on Morg because it shows what Morg has been up to and why he's the kind of person to kill Kevin's friend and take over the prison and everything. But we don't focus too much away from Kevin that it just starts taking away from the episode and slowing down the pacing. But we focus on it enough where it doesn't feel pointless. I think it's a good balance. I also think it's good because it helps show Ben's delve into accepting that he might have to kill Kevin. No, I don't think Ben is right for thinking that, but I do think it makes for a good story. Like I said, that immediate change at the Forge of Creation really polluted this arc going forward, but it really doesn't bring it down as much as you would think. Characterization, I do want to give a five. I think Quarrel is a great addition to Kevin's backstory, and it kind of makes sense that an outsider who's not connected to your life would be the one that's able to get through to you. You know, Ben offered Kevin chance after chance, sure, but he's also directly involved with a lot of Kevin's history. And from what we're seeing in the show, and what you might just know from life in general, the closer you are to people, ironically, the easier it is to disregard their advice. You'd think it'd be the opposite, but it's not. Because when you're close to people, you're comfortable being honest with them. You're comfortable sharing your thoughts, but also more comfortable being flawed. It's like your parents or your friends. They give you advice you don't want to hear, and you feel like you're close enough to just shut it down. But if it's a random person, you know, it's a lot harder. So it makes it easier to hear them out a little bit. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I feel like I see these patterns a lot in life. And we see that here too with Kevin. With someone who doesn't know Kevin, doesn't know anything about his past, wasn't there to witness anything terrible to him. So perhaps that disconnected, unbiased perspective is what Kevin was emotionally attracted to in order to allow him to admit that he needs help. And I think Coral was the perfect character in order to give Kevin that closure. We never really find out much about him, why he knows a lot about controlling his anger, why he's in prison and all of that. But I don't think it takes away from the story. You know, the fact that he's in prison says enough. Morg was a pretty good antagonist. From a personal perspective, he's a pretty standard villain, corrupting and abusing people for power. But here, I like how it's different where it's like drug trafficking and not just the typical taking over the world or ruling this and that or stealing this so he can do that. Man's just hustling, working his way through the prison ranks in order to abuse the system. It's a very different kind of villain we get from Ben 10 usually. And I think that makes him more interesting. Quince was a nice addition to this episode as well. Someone there to help tie together the past narrative and the present narrative. And I like that moment at the end where he honors his sentence even though he could escape prison. He chooses to stay. But yeah, this helps build onto Ben's decision that he feels the best move is to kill Kevin because he did try things the regular way and it failed. Visuals though, unfortunately, it's a two. It's really cool to see young Kevin again. It's really cool to see his mutated form in UAF, but it really just doesn't look that great. It's more of cool in concept than an actual cool visual. A lot of the animation is just phoned in at home here. There's not many opportunities in this episode for there to be worthiness of putting a budget into this animation. Like there's not a lot of dynamic action or complicated sets or aliens and this and that. It's good enough to tell the story. It doesn't look distractingly horrible, but this is very bare bones visuals for UAF. Aside from the Kevin flashback, there's really nothing here for
for you. Importance, I'll give it a four. It is pretty significant into understanding Kevin, and it does help show you why Ben wants to kill Kevin, and also answers a couple questions about Kevin you might have had. But like, if you did go from the Forge of Creation straight into Absolute Power, it wouldn't be a total loss. Like, you could make sense of it all. So while it's not a perfect five in importance, it's still pretty up there. Entertaining, I'm gonna give it a four as well. The story is really what makes this episode, but it does feel like it lacks in some areas. And this episode definitely just feels like a piece of a puzzle rather than a whole adventure in of itself. But that still leaves Nor Iron Bars a Cage off with a 19 out of 25. Great addition to the Ultimate Kevin art, and I'm excited to see where things go from here. Remember when I was ragging on the concept that most movies and shows do with characters, in this case Kevin, where they would change back from a monstrous state with their clothes perfectly intact? Well, I found this screenshot where someone brought this up to Dwayne, and not only did he say this wasn't the first time that Kevin changed back, but that these were not even his original clothes, which could explain the new short's color. And you know, this actually lines up with his alternative future son, who we constantly see shift back and forth between his mutated and normal self. Devlin is able to freely change back and forth, and is able to reform his clothes as well. Which begs the question, at least for this period of time, was Kevin able to shift back and forth between this form? Is he still able to do so? Or since it's been so long, has all of the DNA circulated out of his system? And additionally, if Ultimate Kevin didn't need a machine to be cured, but was able to just do it mentally like he did in this flashback and then later on in Omniverse, would his ultimate form be a transformation that he could also switch in and out of, similar to Devlin? Could be a neat concept to explore. Also, in the flashback, we see that none of the tunnels had any machinery or work done, and Morg said that he knew about Quarrel's tunnels months before he actually caught him. As a theory, I think Morg tracking Quarrel is what led to Morg discovering the Dream Dust in the first place, and thus led to him building his drug empire. So perhaps Quarrel is indirectly responsible for Morg's rise to power. Last week's poll was about a possible additional alien for young Ben to use during Forge of Creation, and over half the votes went to Accelerate. The other aliens barely stood a chance, and after making a video about why Accelerate is such an incredibly popular alien? I shouldn't be surprised, but I am. This is quite a large margin. For this poll, let's talk about Kevin's powers. Which of his three abilities do you like the most? Energy manipulation, DNA replication slash mutation, or matter absorbing slash shape shifting? Let me know what you think in the comments when this video goes live. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and as always, keep it fizzy.